What's up, everyone? I just wanted to let you know before the show that Corecast is now available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher as a real deal podcast. I'll provide links in the video description below. Also, just a heads up to my For the Minions fans, the show will be on Friday this week instead of the normal Thursday. Prepare yourself. Proceed to your reward. Hello everyone and welcome back to Corecast, the podcast that talks about Core the game produced by MetaBuff. I am one of your hosts, Mangoose, the other one from Twitch TV. It's Nato Christo. How you doing, Nato? Hello, how you doing, my Mangoose? How's it going? I am doing great. I'm about four Guinnesses in and I'm not a heavy drinker, so I'm feeling pretty good right now. <laughs> that is awesome. That's how I was last night but i am uh, one of us will be in the clear head tonight then <laughs> <laughs> thank god for that what we're going to be talking about this week um there's a lot of uncertainty about core i mean we 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 all thought that the april 27th was a hard date for the alpha and turns out they weren't ready in time so they had to push back that back which is fine but there's a lot of things that we don't know about core but there are some things in their frequently asked questions that they provided very solid answers to so that's what we're going to talk about today we're not going to talk about what we don't know. We're going to talk about what we do know about Core the game. So let's uh, let's kick that off. One of the frequently asked questions, will there be any kind of deck building with the new item system? And their answer, a very solid, there will be a builder for the item system. What do you think, Nato? I, I really do like the idea of being able to do that, of seeing well, you know, the effects, the stats... Um, you know, the numbers, you know, especially for those people that really like, you know, like the numbers people out there, um, you know, kind of being able to critique and, you know, tweak your deck before having to test it out in like four different games to really see what you're doing. Um, I, I think that's a great thing to do. And I'm, I'm excited for that. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm very much excited that they're doing that. That was a lot of the fun I had with Paragon was actually building my deck and then trying the deck out to see how it worked in game. And with the um, the item systems, you know, you can you can still you can build your deck, but you can still go off that beaten path. And if um, maybe there maybe there's a, an ADC that is absolutely kicking your butt, and there's nothing you can do about them, you may want to go off of that item set that you built your 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 deck, as we will say. I mean, you can call it a deck or whatever you want, but it's just a a pre-built item system. But you can go in, get some cards that can possibly counter that ADC, and uh, I think that's really good. That, that's another important thing I want to say, like, they're calling them items or artifacts or whatever they want to call them, but, uh, mm. my buddy Sockap kind of summed it up. You know, an, an item card, it's pretty much the same thing. You just, you take an item, you, you draw a square around it, and you got a card. It's not that <laughs> big of a difference. It's, it's all, uh, it's all semantics, really. Yeah, it really is, and I, I think I think what the big thing there that everybody did want to know was if we were going to have to go into a game with pre-built decks or, you know, whatever, sets of items, however you want to do it, because that was kind of what they did different. Like, yes, it was cards, and that was different than items from, like, League of Legends or something, but the only real difference between them was just the fact that you had to build your deck prior, and you couldn't see it in action, you know until you were in the game and if you were in the game there was no way of changing it if you made any mistakes to tweak fix you know anything like that so yeah i mean it it really is like it's literally just taking an item and putting a, a rectangle around it yeah i mean well the card system in paragon they, they, they did kind of the unique thing where you would upgrade the cards with different slots for each card but i mean mm -hmm. that's kind of somewhat similar to what you could do in other games but um I don't know. I like. I really like having the pre-built system, even if it's not a deck, as it were, because uh, a lot of times in game, it's just you want to make snap decisions. You, as soon as you respawn, you want to get back into the action, and having a pre-built item system allows you to do that. Um, I would kind of like to see them take it a step further and be like Smite, where you can actually pre-build your ability level ups so that they automatically go off, and then you don't have mm. to think about it at all. I don't know how many times I've been in the middle of a fight leveled up and didn't even want to think about trying to level up any of my abilities because you know i'm by the skin of my teeth trying to trying to duke it out in a fight and it would be nice if it would just level it up for me instead of me having to do that 
Yeah, that is something that I did like when um, for the period of time that I played Smite. Um, I, I really like that because there were a lot of times where, you know, I'd finish a fight in Paragon or, you know, I'd lose or something. And then, you know, I'd see I have like a level up and I'd be like, shit, you know, having that extra couple, you know, having that extra half a second less cooldown on, you know, my Gideon teleport, for example, or something like that, you know, really could have saved me there. You know, so 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 having that and, and, and it does make it uh, more kind of focused on play like you're only worried about you have, you have one objective you're just playing you, you like you know it's programmed already it's gonna buy this item at this time it's gonna level up this ability this time and like you know exactly what's gonna happen that's it's very much set for people who who have mains and they know exactly how they want to play them yes. there's no deviation to that and then I, I also can't you know say how many times i accidentally you know fat finger the wrong thing to level up and then all of a sudden you know you don't even have your um your ultimate because you accidentally hit like E or something like that <laughs> yeah. and you're just like oh what the fuck what do I do here? <laughs> uh, I've done that several times, not realized what level I was. <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah, didn't exactly. Take my ultimate. Oh, that's <laughs> such a silly thing to do, but yes, I have done it, and I've done it multiple times. <laughs> it's also it's yeah, just a it, good way to min max. I mean, a lot of people. It's just mm -hmm. you know it's a small thing, but. People love to minimize their disadvantages and maximize their advantages, and having a pre-built deck building system is one way that they can do that. Right. Yeah, exactly. It, like, the difference between somebody who's going to be picking their own abilities and somebody who just has it set to doing that, like in Smite, for example, it's, it's it, you know, it's very, it's marginally, it's there's like a small margin of difference there between those players, but for some people that makes the world of difference, not having to worry about it, you know, they know one like you know level two i want this ability three i want this ability 12 i want this ability you know what i mean um having that it, it really is just peace of mind and it's just all around just you know that's a fan service thing just make the game as as fun and easy as possible for you because because for some people it can feel tedious doing having to do that every single time and um you know having to kind of remember what path they want to try everything on and um so I, I do love that they're doing it i think it's great yeah for for, for fans that for fans that really wanted this, um, it's going to be there, so mm -hmm. everybody rejoice. Let's move on to the to the next one. That's uh, will the differentiation between energy and physical damage be realized? And the diff their answer was the difference will be realized. Now I did an entire video about this um, earlier this week about the difference between energy and physical damage. This one I'm a little iffy on. Um, Overall, I liked the idea of the energy versus physical damage thing that Paragon did. It didn't end up working out for Paragon. I don't know if it'll work out for Core. I think this might be something that they're imposing on themselves that they don't really need to at this point in time. Yeah, I like. I feel like it didn't really serve a purpose besides just another word to read. Um, realistically, because like you know, you couldn't use. It wasn't like you could like modify a character. And now all of a sudden, you know, maybe like you know, like like physical was doing something different than energy was for them. Um, it was just a matter of you know, this character uses energy, this character uses physical. So realistically, in the grand scheme of things, it didn't change anything. Um, so I feel like just adding the fact, like just adding that in there, is just kind of adding an extra step. That isn't necessarily needed, but you know, if, if that's you know, there are people who do who did really gen, you know, genuinely love seeing that difference. You know, knowing like figuring out when a new hero come out is this going to be energy? Is going to be a you know physical hero? Um, you know, kind of that that kind of stuff. Or you know, thinking about how builds can happen just based off what cards are energy, what cards are physical, and um, you know, so it, it, it's it's interesting that they're doing that. I don't. I'm pretty. Um, in the middle on that, I could, you know, I could care either way. <laughs> the, the, the cards, are, the items are going to be the same, realistically. Uh, a little bit. I mean, it did force some meaningful decisions in the draft. Like, the example mm -hmm. I gave, you know, if somebody picked Twin Blast for carry, and then they put, picked, like, Chimera for the jungle, that's two major sources of physical damage. Um, when you're thinking about your, your caster you might want to definitely pick an energy caster in that instance so that you can deal a different type of damage. Otherwise, the enemy team will just be able to build physical armor and counter your team, especially if you take Countess, which was a physical count, ca uh, physical caster, then all they would have to do is stack physical armor. And that's, that's kind of the main thing here is the different types of armor. Um, right, right, right. 
Um, I I see that that was that was something that I always had an issue with was especially maybe it was only because of the way the decks were built. It really sucked going into a game having a deck built either for physical or for energy and not being able to utilize it properly because you know the rest of my deck is set for a good match as Chimera, for example. But the armor portion of that is you know everyone's on the other on the enemy team's energy and I have a bunch of physical built. And right. I forgot to maybe switch it out or something like that. So I think it would might actually it might be more interesting if they did it with an item, you know, like the with like the item system, and I can just choose what I want. And you know, I see the other team. I'm like, okay, I'm getting bullied right now by this physical, uh, you know, this physical damage hero. So let me just start building into physical. I don't have to worry about having the, the preset deck. So may, maybe maybe that's where my um, my skepticism kind of comes from on that. Right, and then with them not having the the card system with the upgrades like Paragon, there was a lot of cards in Paragon that where you could upgrade them with either energy or physical armor. So you could take that card and attach, you know, six different cards to it. You know, three physical armor cards, three energy mm. armor cards, and then deal with it that way. Whereas with um, with Core, they're not going to have that. They're going to have a more of a traditional item system. So you will have to go off the beaten path. If you did have a pre-built deck that was pre-built to counter physical damage, then and some, then the enemy team has a whole bunch of energy damage. You're going to have to go off that beaten path. You're going to have to you're going to have to cancel out that pre-built deck that we all love so much and go off the beaten path and grab some items to help you counter energy damage. So I don't know. It's a big risk for them. Um, I have faith in them. If, if they can make it work, they can make it work. And it'll be cool, but I I just don't know how they're going to make it work. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see. You know, all this stuff is very much um, kind of up in the air. Obviously, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm I, I get I get what you're saying with all that. I I think it'll be interesting. I, I like I, I'm really hopeful for the whole item system. I've been playing some other other mobas and seeing just having all the items available does make it more fun. It does make me want to look at other builds, but it also does feel sometimes overwhelming. So. It is. It's going to be an interesting kind of uh, kind of take on it. I'm really, I'm really curious to see how it works out. Oh yes, that is very overwhelming for new characters. When it, well, for new players, when you come into a game with the full item system available and you're trying to, <laughs> you're trying to pick a card back at, back at the fountain after you've been obliterated by some Smurf. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it does, it does feel like that. But then at the same time, on the other hand, it was kind of off putting having a new person play the game and I experienced, you know, having experiences a few times and, um, you know, when I introduced my friends to the game, showing them how decks are built and stuff like that. And then they build a deck and then they don't have that kind of instant gratification. Now it's just like, okay, I have a, I have a deck built. How do I know if it's like, if I like it and I'm like, oh, well now you have to go suffer through a four like a possible <laughs> 40 to like hour long game and see if you're okay with his deck and then like to really get to test it out you know you want to try it out in a couple matches mm -hmm. so it was so it's it's, it's gonna I, I think it's gonna be a good thing that they're doing that um with the whole like deck building system and like the you know the differences you know it's gonna it, those two quite those two questions kind of go with each other they, they kind of ping off of each other which is really cool yeah and then well, actually the third question kind of pings off the other two as well, and that is, will mm -hmm. items be locked? And their answer was no, all items are available to all players equally. No item adva advantage based on account progression. I think this is absolutely fantastic. 100% the way to go out of all of these answers to all these questions. I like this one the best. Yeah, me too. I really like, I don't. I can't even think of a game that, that would have done that. I, 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 like, I can't imagine doing that like locking any items or anything like that just because somebody's played a little bit longer i i really feel like that's just a weird thing to even think about like i didn't even that wasn't even a question for me i just like assumed that you know that's just how games were made um i did i, I feel like the last iteration of paragon had it had something similar to that didn't it oh, with like all, the gems and Par all that paragon always had this paragon never had mm. all of the items available to everyone you always had to unlock Oh yeah, cards. that's right. I right. I know yeah, because yeah. I really wanted to play Murdoch, but I didn't have cast tokens. All I had were strike tokens. I had five strike tokens, zero cast tokens, and I really wanted to play Murdoch. And, and to 
And to be good enough in the early game, you had to have those cast tokens on him. Right, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. See, I sometimes forget these things because unlike everyone else in the Paragon community, I literally never made a Smurf account. So I was just like, I made my first account. I, you know, I got all the cards or whatever that I would need to have. And I just, you know, always played with that. So yeah, ah, shoot, I completely forgot that you had to like unlock cards and stuff as you went. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah, that's an insane thing i don't know i i don't know why why anybody thought that'd be a good idea it's one of the things that contributed to the fall of paragon i believe yeah i, I can i can absolutely see why yeah that's that's insane I, i'm really glad that um you know going back on the positive side of this i'm really excited that um core and you know everyone on the core on the meta, um, meta buff team has decided that all items will be unlocked i think that's great i don't see any reason i don't see any benefit whatsoever of making any items locked or anything like that unless you were going to include some kind of paywall and then even then that's kind of a whole disgusting thing on its own um it, yeah I, I i i can't see why any and why anything would be would be locked and i'm really glad that that's a question that is being brought up and that people are asking and they're answering and it sounds very positive and very fan friendly <laughs> yeah i've been having a pretty interesting conversation with my one of my subs um lately about pay to win i i personally think that paragon especially towards the end um was kind of pay to win because not all the items were unlocked now yes you could grind out and get all the cards you needed to be successful for with whatever hero however that costs time and not everybody has time i'm very busy in my job and then when i get home from my job i you know i'll work on youtube as well that doesn't leave me with a lot of time to actually play the game and if i have to grind out to get cards then the only feasible way for me to get those cards is to spend real money to get them so i think i really do think that paragon tour especially version 42 was kind of pay to win if they would have balanced the cards a little better, maybe it wouldn't have been, but they didn't. So, I think it kind of was pay to win, but if you have all the items available to every player equally, that completely eliminates any kind of, anyone ever thinking that it's pay to win. Because that it, it, it brings it to a level play, playing field, everybody's equal, everybody has an equal chance to win, and it brings it down to skill. So, really like yeah, that. And yeah, exactly. And like the only thing that I could think about maybe locking would be, you know, eventually down the road for core, like how Paragon, some of the characters were locked for like the first five levels. I thought I thought that was weird, but I understood it because some characters were a lot more advanced than others. So, I mean, like, you know, if later on down the road, obviously the much more complex cards that, you know, rely on using actives and, you know, certain situ you know situational cards that aren't just passive cards a couple levels so that people can get a hang for roles positions you know how to play abilities you know character callouts you know stuff like that get used to everything else first and then throw on all the complicated extra card stuff that make the game even more like you know fun and 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 uh, and, and really kind of your own play style that's honestly the only thing i could think of that i'd be like I, i'd be like okay i can see why they did that that'd be the only thing that i could see um i'd be okay with locking um, but even then, you know, it, it would, and, and it would, it still wouldn't be an unfair thing because everyone in those first couple levels would only be able to play with other people who have those items locked or, you know, something like that. Right. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that's what they should do, but I'm, that's like the only time that I could really see something like that, that being okay. Cause there were cards in, uh, in core, I mean, in Paragon, in like the later builds of it that were like they were just complicated and they were just like hard to understand and like you know like i, I again like you know getting friends to play they'd sit there and read some of the cards and they and like i'd hear them over the mic like reading a fucking paragraph <laughs> and i'm just like yeah don't worry about that card like it's too much for you right now don't even worry about it just like worry about damage and, and like attack speed and just have fun for a little bit and then worry about that stuff yeah um so yeah that's that's the only thing that i could really think about honestly I think that's uh I think that's good for uh will the audience be locked. Let's move on to the next question, which is uh will core have mirror matches? And their answer actually answers two different questions. The answer is in casual yes, in ranked no. So that answers two questions. Uh we know that in you know 
the mirror matches will not be in ranked. They'll only be in casual. But we also now know that they will have a ranked mode, which is very exciting mm-hmm. and uh, something I think they need. So very cool stuff there. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. And I, and I like how that one kind of busts down two questions at once. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I really like that. I like how, you know, they're not like the mirror matches, whatever. You're going to be able to play whatever you want in, in the regular mode. I've always said that, you know. Do like like th- and this kind of brings me back to like all the other stuff we've talked about like um, prime dunking and all this other stuff like casual mode fine you know let it let you know just play however the hell you want casual but when it's ranked ranked is like a whole different beast and I think rank needs to just be based on skills it would suck losing you know rank status because <laughs> because of some you know cheap mechanic not cheap but some cheap mechanic that is built in the game that somebody was able to exploit over me and my team having better skill but you know number wise we legitimately can't do better because they have something that we don't right um but i i i love just right off the bat today that ranked that the um ranking is going to be ranked is going to be is confirmed and there'll be no mirror matches allowed which is going to be awesome um i really do like that i'm excited for ranked i always wanted a ranked mode i you know i focus a while on my elo and then obviously towards the end i kind of realized it didn't matter at all <laughs> <laughs> um so i just started richter jungling and started fucking around but um no yeah I, I i love that you know again that's something that is like one of those you know things that doesn't matter to me like i never thought about not having mirroring i always thought it was fun to be the dominant chimera or be the dominant gideon or whatever but you know, there, there. I can, I can definitely understand how there. You know, to people that really does matter. And um, you're in a ranked match. That, that, you know, that could really be the change of it. And I like that they're doing that. You know, they're, they are, they're catering to everybody, which is great. I, I, I do very much love how, so far, every question and answer does feel like they're very much catering to everybody. Well, in pro play and you know, higher levels of play, part, you know, one of your skill sets needs to be how to draft and drafting and if you have mirror matches that kind of eliminates the need for that but if you Mm -hmm. have the ability to take away somebody's pick to take away you know certain picks from the other team then you're bringing in the skill of being able to draft well and um that kind of also you know bleeds back to the physical versus energy damage you need to be able to draft well and know multiple heroes and um that's especially the case if there are no mirror matches in rank. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and like you said, you know, that brings a whole extra skill too. Cause you know, I could, you know, my team could be going up against your team and I could be like, okay, you know, I, I know Mongoose is an amazing, you know, let's say Gideon. And I, I know that I might not have a mid laner who I'm as confident with as you are with your Gideon. So if I'm for you or, you know, however it works, I can pick Gideon mainly because i know that i can kind of play him but now i know you're you're crippled a little bit because now you're not playing that character that i know that you're amazing as and i you know i've seen your team play and you know you you guys have a lot of these team plays based around you playing a giddy and you know obviously again just an example but um you know that brings a whole other aspect to the game and that does make it a lot of fun too yeah not only that um, i mean that that's a nice little point like actually knowing who you're playing against and who you're up against Mm -hmm. because a lot of times you did know who you were playing against and who Mm -hmm. they were good with but just being able to cancel out an enemy team's um Mm -hmm. abilities to counter you like i would say richter was definitely a hard counter to count us like richter countered count us like big time yeah so if you wanted to play a um a composition that included Countess, then you could possibly pick Richter for your own team as the tank or offlaner or whatever, just to remove Richter from the enemy team's picks so that you could play that Countess and then roll over them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to experience that part of, of the game as well. Cause you know, it's not something we got to experience because count, you know, mirror matches were there. So I'm excited to really kind of, to feel that extra sort of excitement in there and have that. Um, I'm really excited for it. And kind of uh, also tying into this is, will there be team ranking? Their answer? Yes. <laughs> very simple, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, very simple. <laughs> um, I talked to Opolis about this a little bit. Hip-hop as I like to call him. Um, mm-hmm. 
he was saying that not only will there be team ranking, but the higher your team ranks up, you'll be able to unlock various um, cosmetic things like icon mm. icons for your team and and stuff like that. So if you do have you know your crew that you love to play with, you know form up a team, um, enter the team rankings and. Core, core is very very focused on the competitive side of things and trying to make they're trying to bring pcl back the paragon competitive league i guess it'll be the ccl now the core competitive league but they are very very focused on that and uh i think that's a very good thing yeah i i actually really like that i think that'd be cool you know you guys you know you and your team are playing and now not only do you guys you know do like the cheesy like old xbox days where everyone has like the same like you know like the same like uh clan tag in front of their gamer tag but now you everyone can have like matching symbols and stuff like cosmet like that's i, I really like that that's a, that's a really cool thing yeah yeah that's really cool and then uh you know people can gain fame like that amongst the community i mean you can mm -hmm. you have a favorite team and then you 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 know you have a favorite player on that team you can build like them and try and be like them with their with their character it creates heroes. It creates heroes amongst the community, and that builds mm -hmm. a stronger community, in my opinion. Exactly. Yeah. No, it definitely does. Because then people will want to be like, oh, well, you know, I really like this character, and this is how, you know, Mongoose builds him. You know, this is how Britic builds him, and, you know, he's really good with him. You know, he's him and his team are, you know, fucking top tier. And, uh, you know, so it, it, it does. It, it creates that extra layer of, you know, now... The people that want to take the game seriously, you know, the, you know, us community figures and the people who want to just be competitive, who might not be streamers, you know, themselves, they can really have that kind of fan base following. Yeah. They're like, all right, you know, this guy's on, you know, Mongoose's team. He has their symbol, you know, he's a part of that group, you know. That, so, um, yeah, it, 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 it's going to be really cool. I, I'm excited about it. Like I said, I'm just really excited about team and, and the, you know, the ranking and all that stuff. And just team, you know, ranking and team ranking are two different things. And um, they're both it's, they both are very exciting for me. I'm, I'm excited to do that right up front If you're looking for a gameplay hero somebody to look up to look up to Britic not me Britic is way better than me at the, <laughs> at the actual game <laughs> Yeah, no if you guys are really looking for some of though, uh, NATO Chris is your guy. Uh, there you Brittick, go uh, There you go ready to catch these hands <laughs> as soon as Cord drops Britic <laughs> Catch them chains <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> moving on final question last one that we're going to be talking about today will core be updated with new modes such as 3v3 and 1v1 with fresh maps when the player base can sustain it so this is a little bit of a nebulous question um you know when you know when the player base can sustain it but they do but yes the answer is yes they do plan to introduce new modes we just got to wait a little bit on this one to see um how many people are in the game and if they can actually sustain this sort of thing like the uh what do you call it smite arena arena mode mm -hmm. i guess is the 3v3 and then the 1v1s i think is always fun because you always get those assholes that are like 1v1 me bro 1v1 me hmm. so you can actually do that now in core yeah. you know, once the player base is large enough yeah and and you know I, like i can't i can't think of any good reasons why this wouldn't happen again this also this does come from us as the community you know we do have to kind of step up here and as much as metabuff is doing everything for us we have to do everything we can for them you know if they need us playing the game you know they want you know if they want to do all this fun stuff for us we want to see this, this stuff in the game we you know we owe it to them to, to you know to log on every day you know play a couple matches get that stuff in there you, you like a scan buy it support them it's obviously going to a really good cause you know we can't expect them to be dropping maps and you know new characters and all this stuff of you know, for free, you know, obviously they have to, you know, it has to be rewarded in some way for them. And, um, you know, as long as they're sustainable and, you know, their base is there and people are playing and um, it, it is very much going to be up to us on this one. Um, you know, as much as we want to know if they're going to do smaller modes and different maps, you know, is Legacy going to come back? Are we going to see another monolith iteration? Are we going to see new maps or stuff like that? It's like, yeah, if we're playing, you know what I mean? You know, they, you know we can't have... 100 people playing and expect the world out of them you know they're not getting anything i all of a sudden just throwing numbers out there i don't know how you know what that would come out to but right. um right yeah you know you, the, the player base has to be there if we want to see changes we have to talk to the devs you know we can't we 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 can't jump into the you know alpha and be like yep yeah, this game's trash I'm not gonna play it anymore no we gotta you know fight through it find out what's wrong with it tell the tell the devs you know they've been really good about listening you know, just these few answers, you know, these Q&As that we've been reading off is 
this is just, you know, this has to be something to go by. You know, they're listening to us and, you know, they're giving us the, the things that we want. These aren't just, you know, questions that we that we want answered. These are answers that we want to hear, you know, and, and they're giving it to us. So um, we, we do we we have to play a part too here as the community to make sure that we're given back in some way, you know, by feedback, by constructive criticism. Just uh, kind of the best that I can say to that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you you brought up a good point. Somewhere in the middle of all that, uh, you were talking about the, the the monetization portion. That's the only drawback I see to the three v three and one v one is that you're going to have to have a separate server, which costs money. Each server costs mm -hmm. money, um, mm -hmm. and if you have servers that are supporting five v five, that's ten people that you're supporting. It's going to cost the same for a three v three, which is only six people that you're supporting. It's going to cost the same for a 1v1, which is only two people that you're supporting. So the more money they're making, the more feasible it is for them to actually support these servers that have a 3v3, 1v1 mode on them. So Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, like, like, like they that, just so eloquently put, you know, your, your best bet for, for getting these modes into the game is to support Gore to play the game and to um, you know, give your honest feedback, but, but keep playing and keep trying to find out, you know, she keep just just keep supporting them really yeah exactly yeah and like you know every time you talk to somebody everybody's favorite thing to do in paragon is exchange those war stories of how much money we got back from the refunds you know all that money that everybody was so just like no one had hesitation for like when that when that like like when that when that steel skin dropped like that aztec one i had no hesitation to buy <laughs> that i want i wanted to support them i wanted more skins like that that Gideon skin drop, that pirate one, no problem dropping 15, you know, 15 bones on that because it was it was a dope skin, like you know stuff like that. You know, if you like a skin, support them. You know, there, there, there's no reason not to. It's going to a good cause. You know, it's not going, uh, you know, some company's big pockets. You know, it's going to, you know, to devs that you, you, a lot of you guys talk to, and you know, a lot of you, everybody talks to in the Discord. You know, we're, we're chatting it up with them, and you know, they they jump in there, they talk with us. It's you know, it's going really to a good place, and. Um, obviously, you know, I'm not saying I'm not trying to like dig for money here for them, but you know, if, if you, it, it's 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 just like this is one of those things where we can't just like cross our fingers and you know wish to the fucking tooth fairy and you know rub rub a magic lamp and get us a, a new server. No, like we gotta, you know, we like this is our part. We have to we have to dish out money so that they can fund those servers. Just like you were saying, a server is going to cost the same whether there's ten people on that or six people or two people on that server. So, you know, we, we do, we, we play a big, big part in that. So if you guys want to see that, you guys know where your money's going, you know? Uh, uh, yep. I think, I think that's good. I think that's good for all the questions. Um, let's start wrapping things up. NATO, do you got anything you want to plug for this week? Um, no, I mean, just keep doing what everybody's doing. I see everybody active in discord. Um, you know, check out your favorite streamers. Like I said, you know, hop in any of our streams, any of any of the YouTube channels, you know, offer suggestions, you know, it, it, even even if it's just something that we, you know, couldn't, won't be in the game for years, you know, uh, let's, you know, fingers crossed the game lasts that long, um, you know, just suggest it, you know, knowing something sooner is better than kind of fumbling for it because we could have had it sooner. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, just just keep checking out, you know, your favorite streamers uh, stuff and support the content creator, support the devs, you know, chat it up in Discord. Um, have good conversations. I mean, everybody's doing that now. I think uh, I think core is going in a good place. We just gotta hang tight and be ready. <laughs> right on, dude. Um, for me, uh, I think I'm going to actually start doing um, live streams. Uh, they'll be guerrilla live streams. I never, I will never know when I'm going to do them, <laughs> but I'll be doing live streams from my job. So if you ever want to see what a shitty foreclosed house looks like after people get kicked out. <laughs> just uh you know sub, uh, sub to my channel and uh you might you might be able to catch one while i'm out there um it's pretty gross i will warn you right up front almost all the houses <laughs> yes. i do are absolutely nasty so <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun though <laughs> <laughs> it should be fun for everybody i hope it's fun for everybody but anyway i think that's going to be it um thank you so much for coming out and uh and listening to the core podcast um this should be, by now, up on your favorite podcasting network. So if you could, if you want to support us, go out there, give us, you know, give us a good rating, give us a good review, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, you know, keep the love going. But for now, this is Mangoose and NATO signing off. You guys have a good one. 
バイ